This edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by Ops Genie by Atlassian. With Ops Genie, your next incident doesn't stand a chance. Visit OpsGenie.com for your free account. And by Mac Weldon, Modern Men's Essentials. For 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com and enter promo code MacVoices at checkout. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, it's time for a discussion of another Take Control book, but this time we're going to do it just a little bit different. We weren't able to work out the scheduling with the author, Glenn Fleischman, so we decided to go with, well, we were going to talk to the publisher, who is of Take Control Books, of course, is Joe Kissel, and then I thought, no, better idea, let's get the tech editor, because they would be able to talk to the, you know, the specifics. Guess what? Joe Kissel was the tech editor, so... With two hats on, here he is. Joe, welcome. Hello. Now, see, I, I was I was all ready to go for the no, no, I'm really Glenn. I've uh I've I'm wearing a toupee and uh, I've grown a beard and um you know, just just impersonate Glenn. I, I, I don't I just I don't I don't think I can pull it off. Glenn yeah. Glenn is such a uh such a unique character. <laughs> <laughs> I d I don't think I can make anybody believe it. Well, I'm sorry I blew the uh, the impersonation. So <laughs> it's all good, man. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna talk about take control of your Apple ID. Which yes, we are. This strikes me as such an important topic. I really wanted to get somebody from the Take Control universe on to talk about it. I don't want this book to get overlooked because it is so important. But before we get to the book, Joe, spin us through what exactly a tech editor is, so that the folks understand where you're coming from. Yeah, so uh, in in the in the tech publishing world, um, different publishers divide up the the work in in different ways. A a typical way uh, that that the work is divided up is you have your author, of course, and you have a developmental editor, and the developmental editor does things like. Um, making sure that the book is well structured, that the, that the one chapter flows to the next, that all the information is is in a in a good order, that um, the tone is right, that uh, you you cover all the right topics but not too much, that the length is right, stuff like that, structural things, uh, and then you have a copy editor who worries about things like not just grammar and punctuation, although that is of course part of it, uh, but also stuff like. Uh, does does the, do the do, do the do the terms the the, the does everything com, uh, conform to the publisher's style guide? You know, do you capitalize the word web or not? Is email hyphenated or not? You know, a long long list of things that are sort of up to the discretion of each publisher, um, and and a certain amount of fact checking. Uh, but then often there is yet another person, a tech editor, uh, whose sole job is is fact checking. Um, this person doesn't worry about the structure, doesn't worry about the grammar, the punctuation, anything else. A uh, tech editor is is only concerned with are the technical facts that you are stating true. So uh, most of the time, a tech editor will be someone with expertise in the field in question. And uh, usually uh, you'll want the tech editor to actually try out as many of the instructions as, as feasible, uh, walk through everything on their own equipment uh, to make sure that what has been described is accurate. Of course, uh, you know, our, our authors are, 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 are fastidious and, and they will do their best, but sometimes, you know, you get different behaviors on different devices or with different operating systems or things change and the author just didn't realize it. Or uh, so a tech editor needs to notice those things and also needs to notice um, anything that, that, is, that is technically important that the author might have just forgotten or overlooked. So um, in, in, in our little publishing company, uh, sometimes we hire a particular person to do a tech edit of a book. Sometimes we all kind of get together as a group and do it. Uh, and we just put, put a, a version of the, of the manuscript on a, on a private website and we get all the different authors and editors to just jump in and, and kind of do a group tech edit. Um, sometimes the, the role of developmental editor and copy editor and 
tech editor all gets rolled into one and it because it turns out that the person editing the book has enough expertise to do all of those things. Uh, in this particular instance, uh, Shali McFarland did the uh, developmental and copy editing, um, but uh, I did the tech editing because uh, Apple ID is a topic that I have already I know quite a bit about. I have already written about it somewhat in my uh, my iCloud book and in my upgrading book and some other places. So uh, I stepped I I stepped in to do the the tech edit part of this as well as the the publishing part. So that's that's that story. Got it. Okay, so that sort of puts a frame around it, and I think that as, as important as the other type of editors are, the the tech is especially important in this book because. Because the very nature of the book, there seems to be quite a bit of confusion around Apple IDs. Seems like it should be the simplest thing in the world, but it's not. <laughs> well, you'd, um, you'd think, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're using computers. And is anything really simple when it comes to computers? Uh, it doesn't seem like it. And, you know, this book should appeal to everybody because everybody almost certainly has an Apple ID at some point. Well, it's, it's hard to avoid. I mean, if you have ever... Uh, if, you, if you have an iCloud account, obviously you've got an Apple ID. If you have ever uh, purchased anything from Apple online, whether it's uh, you know a movie or or an app or a TV show or iTunes Match or iCloud Music, you got an Apple ID. Um, you use an Apple ID if you're a developer. You use an Apple ID even if you go shop in an Apple retail store. Uh, it would be not not strictly impossible, but very hard to to use any Apple device for any period of time without acquiring an Apple ID because so many different things in the in the Apple world depend on it. Uh, you're going to need to use it if you use an Apple Watch, an Apple TV, uh, a Mac, an iOS device, a HomePod. All of those things. Um, we- make use of an Apple ID. And, and in fact, uh, one, one of the things that I just love about this book is that this might, I, I, this might be the first time that every known use of the Apple ID has been compiled into a big list. Maybe, maybe we forgot some. I did my best and Glenn did his best to, to come up with a complete list of not just um, the different kinds of things that an Apple ID can do, but also the different places in which you might have to enter or use an Apple ID. And man, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. So yeah, we, we figure that, that pretty much anyone who uses any Apple device is going to have an Apple ID, maybe more than one. We can, we can get back to that in a minute, but uh, you know, we did this survey over the summer uh, of, of take control customers and uh, about, Almost 1,500 people asked us for a book on managing your Apple ID. And of course, that's just, you know, a, a sam- our, our sample size was, wasn't, you know, everyone in the world is just the people that we asked to, to fill out the survey. But that was a lot. It was, uh, I think, our second highest scoring topic. So clearly, um, not only do a lot of people have Apple IDs, but a lot of people have problems <laughs> with their Apple IDs and questions. So uh, I, I asked Glenn if he would write a book on it because, you know, he writes about this kind of stuff for Macworld in, in his Mac 9-11 column all the time. And, um, and I know that he has a lot of personal experience dealing with Apple ID stuff. And uh, I, I thought he would just be the perfect person to tackle this topic. So I'm really delighted that he did. Today's edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by Mac Weldon. Mac Weldon makes men's essentials that are cut above the rest, focusing on not only the quality of their products, but on the shopping experience itself. The result is a world-class approach to the most basic of apparel, underwears, socks, undershirts, and much more. Finding what you want, the size you want, and the color you want is simple, logical, and quick, so you can make your selections and keep on moving. We're not just talking underwear here either. Mack Weldon makes polos, t-shirts, sweatshirts, and more that not only perform and are comfortable, but look good too. From the gym to date night, you're going to love Mack Weldon. Mack Weldon makes some of the most comfortable briefs that you will ever wear. 
That's quite a statement, but based on what I've experienced, it's true. They are so confident in what they make that they guarantee your first pair of underwear, and if you don't love it, they will refund your money and let you keep the product. My first Mack Weldon order included some of that underwear, and I was anxious to see if it lived up to the reputation. And it did. Boxers, briefs, or boxer briefs? Solid, color, or striped? I'm going to keep you guessing, but I will tell you that I mixed it up, and everything I tried was super comfortable and came out of the laundry as good as they came out of the bag. Were they my favorite Mack Weldon item? I'll let you know eventually. Meanwhile, I want you to visit MacWeldon.com right now, take a little time to get a feel for everything they make, decide what you want to start with, and then take 20% off your first order by using the code MacVoices at checkout. And while you're at it, pick up a couple of gift cards too, because Santa doesn't just work for cookies anymore. That's 20% off your first order by using the code MacVoices at checkout at MacWeldon.com. Get yours for the holidays. Thanks to Mac Weldon for their support of Mac Voices. Well, Joe, I'm glad to have you here because I have not had Apple ID issues, um, but I'm glad to hear you do want to touch on one of the topics. And we're not going to try to be comprehensive here. There's just too much. But one of the topics that I find people getting confused about is that they can have two Apple IDs for various reasons. Yes. And up till now, I haven't found a way to combine them. Oh, there, there isn't. I mean, oh, so many people, so many people desperately want a way to merge Apple IDs, or at least if they can't merge them, at least to transfer purchases, historical purchases from one Apple ID to another. You can't. Uh, people have been asking Apple for this for years. And in fact, a couple of years ago, uh, Tim Cook made a comment along the lines of, oh yeah, we hear you, don't worry, we're working on something, but whatever that something was, it never materialized. So I'm, I'm actually glad you brought this up. I mean, Glenn's book does talk a lot about this, um, this phenomenon of having multiple Apple IDs and the ways that you can use them and ways they interact and what, you know, what you do if you have more than one, uh, but but he he can he can only work with what Apple offers, and so since Apple does not offer a way to merge Apple IDs, you know that's not something Glenn has any control over. It's not anything that that he can explain. So, I mean, this is this is of course true of all of our books. We can only we can only tell you about what's there. We, we're, we aren't Apple. We don't have any influence over Apple. We can't make them make stuff happen. But, uh, but back, to your, back to your question, yes, you know, one might end up with multiple Apple IDs for any of numerous reasons. And, you know, you're just whatever. You're in a hurry. You're going to purchase something. You enter an email address and oops, uh, that wasn't the same one you used before. But guess what? Now you have an extra Apple ID. Um, so, if you're not paying attention or if you're, if, you know, you don't make purchases very often or if, 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 you know, if you historically had a different kind of Apple account and it got migrated over and yada, 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 whatever, you might have two or three Apple IDs. And, you know, there, there, are, there are some situations in which you actually need more than one. Like, you know, maybe you have one that's for work and one that's for home. Um, I have least three Apple IDs. And, and for, for some of the stuff I do, like I really have to keep some stuff isolated to my business and I have to keep some stuff isolated to me personally. Um, I cannot use the same Apple ID for everything that would result in very bad consequences. So, um, so whether you have a really excellent reason for having Apple ID, multiple Apple IDs, or whether it was an accident, um, there are going to be consequences. There will be possibly some pain there. So Glenn goes through uh, you know, a lot of the reasons you, you might have more than one and um, some of the ways that you can deal with that. I mean, uh, a lot, I, I mentioned this too in my, my iCloud book. A lot of people don't realize that you can be signed in with multiple iCloud accounts on a Mac or on an uh, iOS device at the same time. You sign in with one, and then you can actually go back and sign in with another. Now, the secondary account, that is whichever one you, you, 
you uh, log in with second uh, can't do all the same things that the that the first one can. For example, uh, the secondary account can't use Find My Mac and like iCloud Drive is tied to to just the one that you logged in with first. But um, you can have multiple uh, Apple email accounts, multiple contacts, notes, like all all those uh, most of those other different categories. Um, you know the the calendars. You can have multiple uh, Apple IDs logged into iCloud on a single device at one time um, if, if you know how to do it and, and if, you, if you understand what the limitations are. So that's one of the things that Glenn talks about in his book. Um, and, and, there, and there are many others relating to multiple Apple IDs. I did not know that. That's, that's really interesting. Um, Stick with me, Chuck. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to because that, that right there may solve some questions or problems. So, okay, I got to go find the book. Yeah. Um, Joe, what, I mean, what else? There's so many things here about Apple IDs because they really are sort of the keys to the kingdom, if you will, for your account. And as you said, iCloud Drive and purchases in iTunes and Apple yeah. Music and, and all those things. So what are some of the other things that are covered in the book that you think are really important that folks should know? All right. Well, you know, I have um, I have a book on maintaining your Mac, which is sort of preventive, preventing problems, and then I have a book on troubleshooting your Mac, which is solving problems that you somehow didn't manage to prevent because we can't prevent every problem. And Glenn has done kind of the same thing in this book. He has a chapter about preventing problems with your Apple ID, and then he has a chapter and 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 more on on solving problems with your Apple ID. So there are absolutely steps that you can take to, um, you know, preemptively to, uh, to either avoid problems or, or maybe more accurately to make sure that you can extricate yourself from problems if and when they arise. So, uh, and these are things like, you know, making sure that you have uh, a, a recovery email address uh, assigned to your Apple ID. So, um, if your main Apple, if your main Apple ID address, email address, uh, becomes unavailable for any of numerous reasons, uh, you need to have another address that you can use for things like password resets. So, um, so that's 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 one example of of a thing that you could do in advance to prepare. But there are there are quite a lot of things that you can do to avoid avoid losing access to your Apple ID account or giving yourself a way to recover if something went wrong. So, so he covers those things. And then again, in case something does go wrong anyway, because things do, um, there are lots and lots of troubleshooting tips in this book, things, things that you can do to solve problems. Um, one of the areas Glenn talks about a lot, and I haven't actually counted up how many pages, but it's a but it's a pretty big chunk of the book. Involves using two-factor authentication, and uh, this is a really big deal. It it is one of those things that you do both to prevent problems and to solve problems. You you want to make your Apple ID resistant to hacking. You want to make sure that if somebody were to obtain your password, that that would not be enough for them to, uh, you know, download all of your backups and take over your devices and find out where you are right now and all those sorts of things. So uh, using two-factor authentication with your Apple ID is hugely important. I mean, you know, it's, it's always a good idea, but it's especially important with something that that affects so many different devices and pieces of information as your Apple ID. So, uh, so Glenn talks at great length about uh, setting up and using two-factor authentication, in, including a lot of little details that, that even I was unaware of until I was doing the tech edit pass in this book. So it's really, really good information. And he even has an appendix about using the old style uh, two-step verification uh, which you might still need to use if you have uh, an older device that is not able to be updated to one of the recent few uh, versions of, of either Mac OS or iOS. Uh, but, you know, Glenn talks about not, not just like how you go about using two-factor authentication and, and what sorts of problems it solves, but um, 
also things like, well, what if you, what if, you know, you're using, you know, BusyCal or using some uh, third party email client or something, some other app that needs to access your iCloud account and, oh, wait a minute, because you have two factor authentication turned on, your password doesn't work. Oh, you need an app specific password. What is that? How do you get one? Can I reuse one of those in multiple places? Um, if I need to change one, if I need to revoke one, what do I do? So Glenn covers all that kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, ba basically he's, he's trying to make sure that you, you stay out of trouble to the extent possible. And if you get into trouble that you have, uh, you have a as much of a solution as can, as can be. <laughs> this edition of Mac Voices is supported by Ops Genie by Atlassian. When everything is working, well, everything is working. But when things go wrong, that's when you need to act fast and do the right thing. Time is money, especially when it comes to your service, and that's why Atlassian makes Ops Genie. With Ops Genie, you and your dev and ops teams get the fastest possible notification of problems so that steps can be taken to get things back up and running. But Ops Genie does a lot more than that. You set up who gets notified about what problems and when they get notified. A smart combination of scheduling and escalation paths makes sure that, even if there are time zones or holidays involved, the right members of your team are alerted to problems. You know how frustrated you are when a service you depend on goes down. Even a few minutes of downtime seem interminable at today's speed of business. With Ops Genie on the job, your downtime stands a better chance of being minimal, making your customers happy. And when your customers are happy, you are happy. Incidents occur. Take the sting out of them with Ops Genie. Right now, when you visit OpsGenie.com, you can sign up for a free account and then add up to five team members, all for free. And I don't mean a trial account. I mean an Ops Genie account. See how Ops Genie integrates with apps like Jira, Amazon CloudWatch, and more, and what it can do for you. That's OpsGenie.com for a free account and up to five team members, all for free. With Ops Genie, your next incident doesn't stand a chance. Thanks to Ops Genie for their support of Mac Voices. One other place I'm, guess it, I'm guessing that um, Apple IDs can become a little bit of an issue is with Apple Family Sharing. Is that oh, yeah. Cool? Yeah, I just kind of thought so. Um, I, I gather that this is uh, covered in the book as well. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm actually going to look this up as we talk because uh, I, I just uh, finished editing uh, a new version of my iCloud book. And, uh, and I, so I, I have that sort of fresh in my mind and I, I trying to remind myself what I covered in my book and what Glenn covered in his book. Okay. So Glenn, uh, Glenn only has really about half a page on family sharing. I actually have more about quite a bit more about that in my iCloud book. Uh, but he does he does give the basics of using um, using family sharing. So we we take control have that information. Um, it's it's not uh, it's not a focus of this particular book though. Got it. Um, but uh, I, I did I did want to mention something that I as I was just glancing over the table of contents here uh, something that I omitted to say before. Um, you know we we talk as though. It is though the reason you're going to get into trouble is, oh, well, there was a bug or you made a mistake or you forgot something. And of course, you know, all that can happen. But there have also been some some pretty high profile cases of people's Apple ID accounts getting hacked. You know, someone somehow finding out or guessing their password. And, uh, and Glenn has a really great chapter about what to do if you are if you have been, or if you notice that you are in the process of being hacked right now, what do you do? And so there, there's a, there's a method, right? There's, there, there are actual steps you can follow if you either know that you have been hacked in, in, in the recent past, or you suspect that a hack is ongoing right now. So just, just wanted to throw that out because that, that feels, that feels super important to me. No, it, I mean, it obviously is because if you lose control of your Apple ID, it's probably possible in most circumstances to get it back, but you're going to have to waste a lot of time and jump through a lot of hoops 
to do that. And yeah. as, good as, that, as good as Apple is, I mean, you don't want them just having, giving out the reset or the codes or to, to anyone because then that gets into the whole social engineering thing. Exactly, so. exactly so. So Apple's standards for, you know, what you need to do to prove that you are who you say you are, 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 are pretty high. It, it's just like, you know, if, if your identity is stolen and you have to, you know, prove to the bank, prove to the credit card supply, to prove to financial institutions, you know, the government, whoever, no, 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 it really is me this time. Well, they're going to want to see some hard documentation. You know, they might want to see your, your driver's license, your passport, your, you know, physical credit cards, other stuff. So uh, in, 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 a, in an analogous way, um, Apple obviously doesn't want to, uh, to give out, you know, password resets to, to just anybody claiming to be you. They, 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 they have a, a pretty high bar you have to uh, surpass to convince them that, that you, you, it, it really is you, even though somebody else has your password. And depending on the situation, depending on how well you have prepared and, you know, did you use two-factor authentication and did you do, need to have a recovery email address and do these other various things, depending on how well you have prepared and the nature of the attack, it, it could turn out that you're unsuccessful. Uh, it could turn out that you are unable to, to meet Apple's high bar for proving who you are and that you really deserve access to your own account and you could lose it. Now, uh, Glenn tells you everything that he knows in this book to avoid losing access to your account or to persuade Apple that you know it's, it's legit. Um, he also, I think, very wisely and, and compassionately offers words of consolation for those who, who just can't. It can happen. I, I hope it doesn't happen to you, but it, it can happen. And we got to find a high note to finish on, Joe. That's not a good one. Um, <laughs> no, no, but I like, I, you know, Chuck, I remember that you had, um, it wasn't an Apple ID issue, but it was a Twitter issue some time ago. And, and I remember how much um, agony you had to go through to convince Twitter to give you back control of your account. And, you know, Mac Voices listeners are probably familiar with that story. But like, it's, it's the same with Apple, only more so because so much more is at stake. And, and I just want everybody to remember, it's not that these companies are being mean, that they're actually trying to help you. They're, they're trying, they, they have these processes in place to prevent the bad guys from taking over your stuff by claiming to be you. Um, so, you know, it's always painful when it happens, but, but these things are there uh, for your protection. And to be fair to everybody involved, it helps, I think, that your credibility a lot as you're trying to work through that process. If you do get hacked, if you have gone through all those steps and you can point to them somewhere in their records, they're going to be able to see that you did have the two-factor authentication set up, that you did have the recovery email address. And if you can tell them what they are, that adds to your credibility. So yeah. e even in the, under a worst-case scenario, if all, all of the, your precautions failed, those precautions are going to help you potentially get it back. And they, they very well could, yes. Yeah, and you're right. I mean, I, I don't even want to go back and revisit that story because it's still too painful. <laughs> but it just, it sucked up an awful lot of time. I mean, and it took weeks to happen. And that's not something, especially with an Apple ID. It's one thing for a Twitter ID. It's another with your Apple ID because that's your, that again is your access to your applications, to your updates, to all those things that you need so badly. That's and, right. I'm, I'm glad we, I, I definitely wanted to get a chance to talk about this book, especially as we head into the holidays when people are going to be getting new Apple devices. They need For to sure. be, it's the perfect time if you haven't done some of this stuff to, to, to do it and fix yourself up. Yeah. And you know, you, you talk about ending on a high note and, and this might sound a little bit lame, but you know, we're, we're all about solving problems. That's what we do. We, what Take Control Books does is we try to find either apps or processes or, 
you know, cloud stuff or situations that cause people pain, that cause people frustration and agony, and we want to eliminate the frustration. We're all about taking away the pain. So, you know, you don't go to a doctor to just, you know, chat for an hour at their usual hourly rates. You, you go to a doctor if you're, if you're sick, if you're hurt, if you're in pain. And the, the high note that you leave on is, oh, my problem got solved. I got the bone set or I got the wound stitched or I got the medicine to heal the infection or whatever the thing is, the, the doctor solved the problem. And, and that's, that's the, that's the result that you're looking for. That's why you go and, and people come to us to solve problems. So I, I am just delighted that Glenn was able to put together this book that helps a lot of people solve some very, very common problems with their Apple ID, because I know a lot of people struggle and a lot of the, a lot of the stuff in Glenn's book is based on, you know, emails that he has received, emails that I have received, questions that we have encountered talking to ordinary uh, Mac and iOS users. And, uh, and, and, and I, I could not be happier that we have now a, a pretty comprehensive resource on eliminating that particular source of pain. Agreed. So I guess the, the thing is, if you have problems, this is the book for you. If you want to prevent problems, this is the book for you. And if you want to just exactly. understand the whole process a little more, this is the book for you. That's right. We, we strongly encourage uh, preventing problems. Just, you know, your, your doctor is going to tell you, well, you know, you should get some exercise and you should eat your vegetables. And, you know, uh, it, it, it's not just the fact that you already have a problem that, that, would, that would lead you to read this book. As you say, uh, it's, it's wanting to prevent them. So obviously, takecontrolbooks.com is where you go to find the book. Yes. Um, how much is this book, Joe? Now, I'm glad you asked. This is a cheap book. I mean, relatively speaking, it's $7.99. Wow. Um, it's, a, it's a short book, okay? It's, uh, I want to say, 76 pages. Yeah, 76 pages. And so we kind of, we kind of priced it in proportion to the length. This is not something that you're going to have to devote hours and hours of your life to, you know, sitting and laboriously working through. It's, even though it's comprehensive, there, there isn't so much to say about an Apple ID. There, there isn't 300 pages worth of, of, of content to, to say about an Apple ID. Um, so uh, we, we feel that not only because the book isn't very long, but also because the book is so important and we want to go out of our way to encourage people to buy it. Um, we, we made the, the price as low as we could. So it's $7.99. And you know, uh, we, we, off, we have this thing where you buy any three books and you get a 30% discount on your entire order. Um, so one of the things we like about this book is if like you, have, you got two books, you got two books you're going to get, but boy, I would really like to get that 30% discount, but oh, I don't want to have to spend so much money on another book. This is like an easy thing to just, yeah, it's, it's little, just add that to your cart and then you get 30% off your whole order. So we, we, we want it to, to be as attractive as possible as a kind of add on thing uh, to, to make sure that this information is in everybody's hands. Perfect. Perfect. I, I really hope people will go and pay attention to this book because the, uh, once more, the Apple ID is so important and it, again, it should be something simple, should be something easy, but it's used for so many things that it becomes complex. Yep. So Joe, you'll be back here to talk uh, soon about some other, uh, some other new things. Um, and yes. Uh, uh, there, we, the, no, there, 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 uh, <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm, I'm so, I'm so busy working on so many different books. I can't even get a sentence out. They're all jumbling together in my, between my brain and my tongue. All, all the different things that I'm working on are just all jumbled together. So yes, I have more to talk about. We will talk again soon. I will look forward to it. Thanks so much for taking the time on this one. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. I really mean it. Check out this book because it, it, you want to guard your Apple ID before and after you have problems. And this book will definitely help you do it. 
I also want to make note that Joe and I have been fighting a little bit of bandwidth frame frame pro rate problems. So if Joe looks like he's stuttering video wise, he's not really stuttering and the audio was perfect. So we're going to let you see this anyway. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Mac Voices Facebook group and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices magazine, free on Flipboard. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us at patreon.com slash macvoices and join these folks who help keep Mac Voices coming to you. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.